Hi, welcome to the studio. Joining me today is this Sandhill Crane doll because in the next few videos I'm going to be giving you an introduction to my methods of making bird heads. Overall the process is similar to that in a previous video about sculpting heads except for one important thing and that's the beak. I'm going to break the topic of bird heads into three separate parts. In this video I'm going to show you how I sculpt a basic head around a beak like this one. The second video I will show you how I make leather beaks and in the third video I'm going to describe how I make polymer clay beaks. Let's get started. Let's start with taking a look at a finished head. This is a sandhill crane head, very similar to the one on the doll that you saw just a minute ago. This is actually a different head. And if you haven't already, I would suggest that you watch the video that I put up about making mammal heads because most of the detailed steps for shaping the head are described. So right now I'm just going to talk about some of the differences due to beaks, inserting the beaks. Shaping the head, getting the particular shape and size that you want, covering the head with all the layers of fabric, inserting the eyes, all of those techniques are the same and I'm not going to cover them here. So first of all, when you take a look at this head, you'll notice that the beak is not sewn on. This is not some extension that's just plopped on to the edge and just stitched on. Not at all. This whole section actually goes all the way quite, quite deep into the head. It's an integral part of the head. So what that means is it's never going to fall off and it's never going to come out. And in fact, if you wiggle it around, and I'm, I'm moving it pretty good here, you can't even pull it out. So it's never going to come loose, it's never going to droop or sag, which is good. This is a polymer clay beak, but the same thing applies to a leather beak. It goes all the way through the head. So what happens is I make the beak first and then the head is constructed around that beak. So let's take a look at the basic step. And I have a beak here. It's a little bit messy because I had a, a glue incident earlier. And the beaks are always larger than the finished size of the beak. So when I'm thinking about what kind of bird I want to make, I kind of think about the general size and shape and I'm going to talk about making beaks in another video but it's important to realize that only a portion of this finished beak is going to show so maybe only that much of it would be outside of the head everything in here would be inside the bird head so it's as simple as getting some glue and I use tacky glue and use a generous amount of glue you don't want to be stingy here go all the way around and then go along the back also and this can be messy and then you're just going to get a strip of wool let's remember that all of my heads are made out of wool and you, I'm wrapping pretty tight here because I want to make sure that there's good contact all the way around the wool and sometimes you'll actually see the, the glue seep through and that's fine and then I do kind of like a little quarter turn, so I'm going to put some more glue here. And I don't pay attention to top and bottom and sides or anything like that when I'm doing this because it doesn't matter. All of this is going to be um, covered with more and more layers of wool. So if it's a little bit bumpy or uneven or oddly shaped at this point, it doesn't matter. So just get that and then I rubber band the whole thing and then this will be set aside to dry. And I'll just trim this off. The only thing that I'm really concerned about is making sure that this first layer of wool is well back from where the beak is actually going to begin on the finished head and it is. So I have plenty of room to add layers and layers to shape the head as I would with any other kind of head and that process is described in my other videos. So, you know, further, a couple more steps along and you would see something like this. So once you have that wool base, this here, and this is dry, you're gonna get some little crusty bits with the dried glue, but that's fine. All of the other layers of wool are just gonna be stitched onto this surface. And those first few layers, it's gonna be very, very, very tight stitching. 
I don't go through this leather and foam because it's actually very difficult to sew through but you could if you really wanted to. If you had a Glover's needle, which is a very, very sharp needle, you could do that. But I don't find that it's necessary. These heads with the glue and the wool, they are really in there and it's very, very, very difficult to take these heads apart. So after you have that first layer, it's just as simple as adding extra layers on to shape the head however you want it, to make it as big as you need it, to fill out the cheeks, to make the crest, to make this part wider, this part narrower. And then the last step would be covering this whole thing with fabric and then inserting the eyes. So it's not complicated. <laughs> you can see it's pretty easy. Uh, the hardest part is actually making the beaks and I'm going to cover that in the next two videos. So stay tuned. Thanks.